Okay, everybody, you can unmute yourselves. Any thoughts? That was great. Um, there you are. You're right there. There you go. Now you're sideways. Now you're in the middle. There's the camera, right? Okay. Yeah, I love, I love that particular teaching. I know that the uh, Nazarite vow got taught once before, but I wanted to be sure to stick it in here tonight because it, it's such an important part of understanding some of these things, like Samson and John the Baptist. That these two guys and Sam, Samuel. They had made this vow, and they, they, they were committed to it, and, well, at least uh, John the Baptist and Samuel were. Samson, I don't know. He uh, kind of drifted away from it many times, and he ended up paying the price. He died because of it, although he took a whole bunch of Philistines with him. I hope I didn't get too preachy with you guys out there. <laughs> no, you did fine. You got marriage. <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was pretty perfect, you know. <laughs> You're with your wife. I like that. Let the wife have their way unless there's, unless she's tromping on the word of God. Let the wife have her way. Too bad it doesn't usually work that way. Yeah. In reality. Well, there's all that that silly belief that men are better than women, and you can't. Sh it says in Acts uh, 10 that God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't respect us any more than he respects anybody else. It's what we do once we come to God. Because you're all a part of the body of Christ. That's right. He's Husband saying he doesn't respect anybody. Yeah. I mean, God, God <laughs> tells us to uh, love our wife as Christ loved the church, the church of the bride. I mean, to give himself for it. You know, it's just, just Don's personal philosophy. And I guess I shouldn't teach it as the word. <laughs> Why it's in the word. That's true. So yeah, you should teach it as the word. Excuse me, I'm sucking on a cough drop here because otherwise I start coughing real bad. I was Never ask if the coughing was doing any better. If you were doing any better with that. Yeah. It it works better if I start taking the, the thing early before I start teaching which I did tonight, and it, you know, keeps me from coughing quite so much. That's what you get for f smoking for 40 years. Oh, I've been there, did that. Yeah. Matter of fact, this May 31st, I'm coming up on my 20th anniversary that I quit smoking. Wow. 20 years ago. Yeah, I just went past my tent. I quit in uh, July of, well, August back, no, July of 2006. Were you heavy? Heavy into it? Oh, yeah, I was smoking a pack and a half to two a day. Then I had a pulmonary embolism. And guess what? I spent a month in the hospital, so it was real easy to quit. Don, I used to smoke four packs a day. Four packs a day. Can you imagine doing that nowadays with the price of cigarettes? Oh, I was floored. Friends of mine said that they had to quit smoking because they couldn't afford it anymore. I said, well, how much is it? This is $100. You get two cartons, it's $100. Yep. You fathom. My, my brother uh, quit for that reason. It was just too expensive for him. Mm -hmm. And he was buying them on an Indian reservation where they were way less money and then suddenly they cut that off they wouldn't let white wouldn't let the white devils onto the indian reservation anymore to buy cigarettes <laughs> just as well yeah it, it's really something you know that they were 
not there's no tax on cigarettes for Indi for um, Indian reservations, and you're spending like ten dollars per carton. Wow! And now, if you go into a store here in New York City and buy a carton, it's over a hundred dollars. Yeah. Same in Connecticut. It's crazy. That's got to be one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do, quit smoking. But it sure well, is rewarding. Well, like I said, I was in the hospital, so it wasn't hard at all. Because they wouldn't let me smoke in there. <laughs> you went cold turkey like I did. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, my wife and daughters had all threatened to kill me if I tried to smoke again. <laughs> That's good motivation, too. <laughs> yep. You guys all seem quiet tonight. Uh-oh. Don's computer's freezing up. That's why he's been in and out. Right. Okay, Don. Have a good night. We'll see you next week. Bye, Don. Bye. I think we lost Alan, too. Oh, there he is. Ellen's doing exercises. <laughs> so. What part of Texas is Ellen living? Austin. Austin. That's what, about midway? Kind of midway state? between Dallas and Houston, isn't it? Somewhere there, what? Bob. Isn't Austin kind of between Dallas and Houston? Um, it's more like between Dallas and San Antonio, but then it, it, then it is in Houston, because Houston is kind of south, uh, east. It's more east than it is. Yeah, it's East Texas. In between. East Texas. Not West Texas. Yeah, Austin is like right in the center. Yeah. Kind of in the middle of the state. Yeah, and then Houston is kind of, well, you picture the coast. Houston is kind of east of Austin than it is south. It's kind of hard to say because I-35 isn't all that north and south either, e north and south either, either because it's kind of goes from the northeast side of Texas to the southwest side of Texas, sort of in an angle. So that kind of throws it off there too. Yeah. Well, if, if you look at a map, anyway, just, just kind of look at the center of Texas. And that's pretty close to Austin. Yeah. I remember going from going to Austin. We, uh, when we were WWs, uh, my wife and I went home. Went, went, there was two other WWs who were from McAllen. So we went from Lubbock down to McAllen. We went through Austin one way and through San Antonio the other way. All I remember is we drove and we drove and we drove and we never got to where we were going. <laughs> it's a big place. Yeah, it's bigger than New England. Oh, yeah. Just about anything would be bigger than New England. Come on. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, New England isn't exactly small. If you go all the way from um, Maine, to down to where you're living, that's a good hour drive. Maybe just a skosh longer than an hour. Not by much. I said hour. 15. I said 15 hours. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, top of Maine? Because we've gone from, the top of we've gone from the here top? up to Vermont. And that only took like an hour and a half. And then you hit Maine, where it's 
keeps going and going and going. It's the Energizer Bunny. <laughs> yeah, Caribou, Maine is where my dad was born, and that's right up on the Canadian border. And uh, it took a long time to drive from Caribou to Ashland, Massachusetts, which is where we lived. And Ashland would be another hour and a half from where you live, depending on how fast you drive and which route you take. <laughs> we won't talk about that. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, there, there is a route that's faster. It's much faster from, to go from here to where I used to live in Massachusetts. It's much faster to go up, um, what is it, 90, not 95, the other way, up to Hartford and then 91. cut across. You go up to Hartford and then you cut across over to uh, Massachusetts. You go from where I am here. North. You get on uh, north, you're on 95. And then once you get to New Haven, it turns to 91. Or it goes on straight across the state. Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't remember, I, don't, I don't remember the, the route numbers. We used to do it all the time. We used to go out to Mass Pike and come down um, through, near Springfield into Connecticut. We head out almost all the way to Springfield and then come south into Connecticut. We went by uh, Old Sturbridge Village, and that took, what, three hours, four hours, to get all the way from here to Massachusetts. Because there's two different ways you can do it. You can go up along the coast, and that takes longer, actually. Yeah. Because then you go through Providence and all that other mess. Believe me, Providence is a mess. If you've never driven in Providence, you don't want to. No, I never have. Maybe the worst drivers in the entire country live in Providence. I thought California you... had that. Hmm? I thought California had that claim. Oh, I don't, I don't know. I still think uh, the Rhode Island drivers, they, they, they get their licenses from Sears. <laughs> and their teacher is Clyde Crashcop. <laughs> I've heard something similar about people who live in around Pennsylvania, around Pittsburgh, and people who drive badly got their license at Kmart over in Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> They're getting their licenses at Sears is a pop popular uh, thing for bad drivers in um, Cleveland. What do you know about, there's, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to send you a, um, an email and ask you about a passage in Psalm 191, I think it was, about someone's arm being, you can shoot a, a, a bow of bronze. Since you're into manners and customs, I thought maybe you might understand what that meant. Might, but maybe not, too. Um, do you remember which psalm off the top of your head? I think it was 91. Okay, let's go to Psalm 91 and we'll check it out. Oh, 91. Okay, let me screen share this. Okay. Figuring out his math, introduce myself. No, it was not 91. It's not 91. Okay. Well, look it up and send me an email and we'll see if we can't figure something out about it. Okay. I can always, 
I can always ask on my uh, uh there's a lot of people on that page that I do on manners and customs who know their stuff. They know their stuff they know their stuff really well and probably some probably some of them know it better than I do. <laughs> Seems like a unusual thing, you know, that, that I'll shoot my my bow of bronze or something like that. Bow of bronze? Yeah, okay. it's something about a shooting a bow with a made of bronze. And I don't I have no idea what that means. Hmm, nothing there. Maybe just put in bronze. Oh, I think bronze has a Z in it. Oh, there you go. There we go, Psalm 1834. He trains my hand for the battle so my arms can bend the bow of bronze. That's it. I have no idea what that means. Is bronze considered a very strong iron? Bronze is, um, yeah, it's, um, it is very strong metal. Well, there's one thing we can do here. Let's go back to where we were and we'll go to the interlinear. Uh, now that's interesting. It's not in the interlinear. Hmm. So that is added. Let's go back and look at um, what some of the other translations say. He trains my hands for battle and strengthens my arm. Bron bow of bronze, bow of bronze. Teaches my hands to us. Steel. When you get into a dilemma like this, my first suggestion is you check Young's literal, because that's probably one of the most literal translations there is. Teach my hands battle. Bow of brass. Hmm. Let's go back to the over here. Oh, it's steel. The bow of steel. Hmm. Interesting. And my arms of steel? Steel. As opposed to bronze. Right. Let's take a look at this. Oh, the short definition is bronze. Can be translated bronze or copper, apparently. Oh, here it says it's figurative of strength. 
strife, strength, strong, be strong. So it's representative of being something that's strong. Oh, strong. Strong. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> so, which sounds, you know, pretty, like it would be pretty accurate. It's just indicative of strength. Okay. That's like when it says hosts. The host of heaven, it means the armies of heaven. Yeah. Every time. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of the armies. Well, I'm going to call it a night, I think. Okay. Because I'm starting to get tired. I didn't sleep well last night, so I'm getting tired. So, good night, everyone. We'll see you next All week. Right. Good night, you guys. Good teaching. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless. Bless you.